Well, welcome to a wee extra podcast recording uh, for Palm Sunday. Uh, through Easter week, we're doing some live link uh, services which will be recorded uh, each morning, Monday to Friday, and then on Sunday morning as well, looking at Romans 5 and Romans 6. Um, but I've also been doing some short reflections in email um, on Sunday mornings uh, through this time when we've been apart. And as I was writing this morning's for Palm Sunday, I just thought I would uh, record this one as well, and hopefully it will be uh, an encouragement to you. Palm Sunday, of course, is the beginning of the week leading up to Good Friday, then Easter Sunday. Uh, A week of such intensity and importance, it occupies a significant proportion of each Gospel account, including almost half of the Gospel of John. We've been looking at Luke recently, And so we're going to read Luke's account of the Palm Sunday events. This is Luke chapter 19. Luke 19, and I'm going to read from verse 28. Luke 19, 28. When he had said these things, Jesus went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he drew near to Bethphage and Bethany, at the mount that is called Olivet, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village in front of you where, on entering, you will find a colt tied, on which no one has ever yet sat. Untie it, bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it, you shall say this, the Lord has need of it. So those who were sent went away and found it just as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owner said to them, why are you untying the colt? And they said, the Lord has need of it. And they brought it to Jesus, and throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. And as he rode along, they spread their cloaks on the road. As he was drawing near, already on the way down the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to rejoice and praise God (coughs) with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out. Jesus' entry into Jerusalem on a donkey, he was receiving the acclaim of the disciples who would abandon him and of the crowds who would call for his death. It's known as the triumphal entry. I think it's in some ways the strangest triumphal procession leading to the strangest triumph. As Colossians 2.15 says, Having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. With the triumphal entry on my mind, I did a Bible word study this morning on words relating to ride and rider. God's not often spoken of as a rider in the Old Testament, but when he is, it is an awesome image. Take, for example, Deuteronomy 33, verses 26 and 27. God rides to the help of his people, and it's an image of power and majesty, of love and judgment. There is none like God, O Jeshurun, that is Israel, who rides through the heavens to your help, through the skies in his majesty. The eternal God is your dwelling place and underneath are the everlasting arms and he thrust out the enemy before you and said, destroy. If you go into the Psalms, Psalm 68 calls for praise to God who rides through the deserts, bringing compassionate care to his people and also to God who rides in the heavens, displaying his awesome power and majesty. Psalm 104 also speaks of the power of God, particularly in creation, but also in his provision, and says that he makes the clouds his chariot. He rides on the wings of the wind. Isaiah 19 is about God's judgment on Egypt, and it begins, Behold, the Lord is riding on a swift cloud and comes to Egypt. And Habakkuk 3 verse 8 speaks of God's judgment when you rode on your horses, on your chariot of salvation. There's a pattern here. When God rides, 
he displays his power, exercised in both compassionate care and salvation and in just judgment. The two go hand in hand. We see that in the direct prophecy about Palm Sunday in Zechariah 9. The first half of that chapter is about judgment on the enemies of God's people. And the second half is about the peace and salvation, the freedom and provision that he will bring to them. And the central verse of Zechariah 9 is verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. In the triumph of the eternal king, the Messiah, God brings his judgment and his salvation, defeating evil in order that he might bring about his eternal rule of peace. There is one other place in scripture where we get this combination of judgment and salvation in relation to riders. You're probably familiar with the four horsemen of the apocalypse in Revelation 6. It's an image that has captured the imagination for centuries, though I think it's often misquoted and certainly misunderstood. In my experience, People might think the four horsemen are war, famine, plague and death. But if you actually read through the chapter, death is not a separate horseman. And that list misses the first one. I looked and behold a white horse. And its rider had a bow and a crown was given to him. And he came out conquering and to conquer. So that first horse is about conquest, but also about rule with the crown. Now, of course, in Revelation, there are images upon images. And we see in Revelation 6, it is the Lamb, Jesus, who opens the first seal on the scroll of God's purposes. He lets loose that first rider. But the first rider is also Jesus. And we see this very clearly if we go forward into Revelation 19. That chapter opens with God's people rejoicing at his judgment and salvation. And then we have that wonderful image of the marriage supper of the Lamb. The church and its saviour fully and perfectly united. The chapter ends and goes into chapter 20 with the destruction of all those who rebelled against Jesus and their final eternal judgment. And at the heart of all of this is the rider on the white horse again. Then I saw heaven opened. This is Revelation 19 verse 11. Then I saw heaven opened and behold a white horse. The one sitting on it is called Faithful and True and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes are like a flame of fire and on his head are many diadems and he has a name written that no one knows but himself. He is clothed in a robe dipped in blood, and the name by which he is called is the Word of God. And the armies of heaven, arrayed in fine linen, white and pure, were following him on white horses. From his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations, and he will rule them with a rod of iron. He will tread the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God the Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh he has a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. It's a picture that is full of Old Testament imagery. The winepress of God's judgment. The idea of that sharp sword, the word of God is one that we're familiar with. The rule with a rod of iron from Psalm 2. There is no doubt here that this is God himself. This is the Messiah, Jesus. It's a fearsome image, but it is also in that context of rejoicing. And as we've said before, it is not that we are called to rejoice in the fate of those who rebel against God. We're to mourn that. But we also rejoice that evil will be defeated. 
the Messiah in this image, God himself, comes to us as Saviour and Lord. He is the one who fulfills the Old Testament. And as he rides into Jerusalem on a donkey, we see echoes of those declarations of God riding in majesty and power. We hear the first notes of a song of victory that reached a crescendo on the cross and in the empty tomb. A man rides into Jerusalem on a donkey and we hear the song of God's perfect judgment against all evil and of God's eternal reign of peace with the people he has called and saved. Father God, we thank you for this incredible image. We thank you for these reminders from your word that you are the God who is awesome in majesty and power, that you are the one who rides out both in judgment and salvation that you are the one who ultimately will ride out victorious. And we thank you for these reminders in Palm Sunday of that victory, for the reminders of that salvation and judgment that came at the cross, the victory that was achieved there, that moment of triumph in the midst of apparent defeat. Father God, your wisdom and might, they are truly beyond what we could ever grasp by ourselves. And we pray that your spirit would reveal to us once again who you are in your judgment and salvation. Lord, give us compassion for those who are lost without you. But Father, also let us rejoice in the salvation that you bring. Let us rejoice that evil will one day come to an end. That the brokenness of this world, which we are so aware of, that it will one day all be put right. We thank you that that all comes through that rider on the white horse, our victorious King, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen.